Hey guys, so I'm in the back seat here, just give you a quick round and down again of all the stuff that I've uh, done. I'm filming this on my digital camera because it's got a slightly better focus when looking at things up close and you'll notice with the GoPro that it's very fish eye so it's zoomed out a lot. So this is going to be better off for showing you some stuff up close. So as you know we installed Alpine Type R coaxial speakers into the doors and then I've got a nice emblem hidden away in there which when you close the door is out of sight. Um, Focal BAM sound deadening on the outside skin of the door and then Dynamate on the inside skin. On the parcel tray here I've got the made for, made for Holden VE grills and these cover up those holes that you saw earlier that I had popped out with a nice wee Alpine Type R logo on there as well and yeah they look really good behind the headrest there and that's everything that's in the uh, back seats I'll hop into the front now and show you the rest of that so in the front now um, of course you know we've got the Alpine Type R component speakers in the doors well the woofer is in the door the tweeter is up in the factory tweeter location under the dash there I'll just turn this down a wee bit so you can hear me um, again Alpine Type R emblem on both sides hidden away below the vent there and you just close the door it's missing but then open it up nice wee gentle reminder that you've got some awesome speakers in the doors um, microphone for the stereo up there the stereo controls are hooked up now the main unit of course the Alpine X008-AU so it's full navigational touchscreen reversing well, does, this one doesn't have the reversing camera um, installed but it d can take one obviously Bluetooth for hands free USB, HDMI, just everything a stereo can possibly do it's a big stereo, that's my hand it's 8 inches from corner to corner and it just does everything So um, and this fitting kit here is also made by Alpine and then it's got this really awesome touchscreen control here for the oh if I turn the ignition on really awesome touchscreen control here so this has replaced the factory heater unit you've got your fan control um, temperature oh, gear stick hazard lights you've got internal air selectable uh, your mode, demister, rear demister, AC on off, um, I'll just turn all that off for now because we don't need the heat actually going. Okay now, um, the other thing is that this has an interface all built into it, all you have to do is plug your stereo in and it starts to work. Um, this also does a couple of cool things, it puts up here there used to be some uh, stereo information but instead now it shows your volts so it's around about 12 out of around about 12 volts on the battery at the moment uh, your oil level that comes on when the engine starts so that's why it's showing zero at the moment and then also in here um, if I change the volume see now it comes up with volume up in the top there and also if I seek up there we go it shows you what station you're on so that works really well. It also comes up with Bluetooth audio if that's what you're on or USB or whatever it is. Whatever source you're on it's going to display up on the top of the dash there and it works really nicely. I'm happy with it. And obviously the steering wheel controls all work and naturally hooked up. Um, this trip button here however that just controls that display there. But it doesn't stop the audio information from showing up there. Um, I've run the USB socket just to the top pocket in there, if you can see that it just pops out of the corner and you can plug whatever you want into it. The centre speaker, okay so I have left the centre speaker in there but I've disconnected it so that it's got a bit better sound quality because that factory old paper cone was just going to bring down the um, total sound quality of the whole system. GPS area was hidden just up under this dash here and I can show you that now if I just press GPS except and there we go it knows exactly where we are Oop, window. oh and obviously it's same in the front door so we've done focal bam on the outer skin and dynamite on the inner skin 
entirely for all of the doors and I did dynamat on the parcel tray as well I forgot to mention earlier I completely dynamated the whole parcel tray and it all sounds really good the only thing I haven't done is done a full tune up of the system that's why he's come back in today so I can finish tuning it um, and so I'm going to do that now and yeah I also did promise you guys I was going to show you a full in-depth um, look at what the rest of this at what this um, heater control unit does so I'll go through all the functions of that now let's get the gear stick out of the way right so you've got internal air versus external air if I just turn the fan on a wee bit there we go so we've got internal air we probably need to be on a different mode not demister there we go so if we're on face So you got internal air, external air, fan up and down, mode, uh, demister on, rear demister on off, that puts it straight to front demister mode, AC on or off, you, I'm pretty sure you can only turn it off if you're on regular mode. Here we go. Aircon on or off, temperature up and down, and the top there has a light button. Um, this button up here has the power logo. If you push that once, it just it goes and presses that hold, holding logo, and I think it just stays like that. Yeah, just as a nice wee screensaver. And if you touch it once, it comes back to life, and you've got the heater and everything like that. And then the settings button here, you can actually go in and do quite a few different things with this. So zone control, single or dual, colour, and this might be a bit fuzzy for you guys, blue, red, green and white, I've set it to red because everything else in the car is red, uh, startup image, there's a few, I haven't looked at them but there's a few different Holden startup logos, brightness, dimmer, and the next one we got driver on the left hand side or right hand side, temperature in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, rear monitor DVD, MDF info, Oh, sorry, MFD info. Pollution mode, sports display. And then we've got version information, touchscreen calibration. And that's all the settings for it, but it's, yeah, it's all good. So I've set it to red since everything else in the car is red. And I'm pretty sure I've set this to red as well. If I go home to audio here. Yep, this is all set to red. I'll do it. As far as a mini review for that product goes, I would have to say that I'm very, very happy with it. Um, it's very, very fast and functional. I love the customization of it. I love the graphics. They're nice and high quality. Uh, the touchscreen is nice and sensitive. So, yeah, all thumbs up for that fitting kit. I could not recommend them more. Um, the other thing, there's also a wee has a light button here, which I've installed. And that's just in case you got the screen with the heater off, and for some reason you still need to put the has lights on. And that's pretty much everything. So the sub and amp are all in there wired up and going, so that sounds good. Um, I just need to put some of these uh, removable rock straps on, which are basically just going to wrap around the front of the sub box and hold it in place while it's in the car so they can't fly around. But they're also disconnectable with clips so that you can get the sub in and out if you need to. Alright, so here's the uh, box with the sub in it since you didn't get a good look at it last night. So just wrapped in charcoal, simple bed liner, and then on the side here I've had some uh, originally brown carpet which I spray painted red to match the red of the Alpine Type R and the red of the Commodore, so I think it turned out quite well. Same on this side. And then just a couple of red and black wires coming out the back with some crimps on them. Okay, so I'm officially finished in the boot. Um, just give you guys a quick overview of everything. Again, so obviously we've got the Alpine Type R 12 inch sub in the custom box, which has been wrapped charcoal black and red insert. 1000 watt monoblock amplifier over there in the corner, if you can see that. I'm 
just gonna get in the car here and you're gonna come under with me so you should be able to see here this is looking at, at the bottom of the parcel tray so in these little inserts you can see the bottom of the sound deadening so that's all sealed off and then these openings here for the where the rear speakers would normally go have been opened up and allowed for and put the grills up and I've put the grills over top which means it uh, sound can flow from the subwoofer through the grill and out into the cabin and that's pretty much everything that there is to the boot oh I've just put some rock straps on so secure in the sub box so they're disconnectable and removable but like you know that'll hold it there while he's driving around that's pretty much everything I'm gonna put the boxes and everything back in the boot and then close it up and it'll be done Right, so yeah, I've taken a bunch of photos and stuff for Facebook and everything like that. Now I need to do the finishing of the tuning of the system on the stereo, so I'm going to do the next. First of all, I'm going to do time alignment and then look at EQing and things like that. So I'll do some time alignment, check the crossovers and everything else, and go from there. Balance and fader needs to be a wee bit, needs to be centered because he's already gone and changed his stuff. Okay, time alignment. Okay front left. I like to measure the distance from the tweeter to the air as opposed to the woofer just because the tweeter is kind of the more prominent speaker it kind of cuts through everything else so it's around about 120 maybe 130 I would say to my ear so we just need to change this up that sounds good it sounds like now the the voice because i've been doing this to the front right listening position now it sounds like the sound stage or the image the voice it sounds like it's coming from right about here so that's bloody perfect right in front of me that's what i want so now i can save this to preset one so and the cool thing about this series you can have presets you can have preset one two and three but preset one there is designed for front and right. You could set preset two to the front left if you wanted, or um, and preset three to just the front both. So you would do the listening. You would each time you do one of those, you would just change your measuring distance to where it is, wherever it is that you're listening from. Okay. So this is the crossover slope I got here. So you can see here. So I'm on um, rear high pass filter at the moment. If I change the slope, you can see what one it is. So at the moment, the rear high pass filter is starting to cut off at 40 hertz and then goes down and is completely gone by it reaches 20. That's about perfect because you can't hear anything below 20 on your ears anyway. Um, the front channel is exactly the same and then the subwoofer low pass filter I have made it start at about 80 hertz at an 18 degree octave so it doesn't do anything above 125 hertz and I think that's about ideal for a 12 inch sub in a 24 to 28 litre box. So that's all sorted. Levels are all at zero dB. Yep, now we're all seated, we're all set up and good to go. What we'll do now is we'll have a quick listen and see what it sounds like. I'm gonna start the engine. Ah, see now you can see the fuel oil level is going up. We're gonna have a listen to some music over Bluetooth and see what we think. I'm gonna use some songs I use when I try and demo music in my um, Mitsubishi. Let's try uh, this pressurized one. We've got O2, sir. It's thin, but you'll be able to breathe it. Green for breach. Warning. Unidentified craft. State your purpose and content. Well, the bass side of things is definitely bloody awesome. That uh, Type R sub does a bloody good job, and the speakers do a hell of a lot of bass as well directly just because of all that sound deadening. Something to consider because I was listening to it and it did sound like it was starting to distort a wee bit just at the top end. But I'd say that it would purely be down to the fact that 
he has opted to just power the speakers straight off the head unit as opposed to having an amplifier. And most systems I do where you do sound editing and subwoofer, you would have a four channel amplifier for your speakers, but he didn't want to go that way. He's opted just to play it straight off the stereo. So I think for how loud that went off a stereo, that's pretty good. I'd be happy with that. Um, maybe he'd come back late, maybe he'll come back later on and get a four channel amplifier and um, go a bit bigger. But other than that, yeah, no, I'm, I'm super happy with that. That's a bassy song, let's try a, um, like a clean, sort of crisp, quality based song. I think we're both very happy with how that sounds. That's that's bloody awesome. So I've just downloaded this um, free app off the App Store. It's a little RTA meter. Um, it's just using the built-in microphone off the phone, which I know isn't that great, but I want what I want to do is try and play some pink noise through the system and see what this comes up with. Um, I've got a Rock from Fosgate amplifier set up disc here, which actually has a whole lot of different things on here. It's got uncorrelated pink noise and correlated pink noise. I don't know the difference between those. If any of you guys do, let me know down in the comment section because I'd be interested to know what the deal with that is. I'm just going to go for uncorrelated pink noise because it just sounds standardish, <laughs> which is track number 22. I'm going to play it and see what the RTA comes up with. So right on to 75. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was wrong. It's way further down than I thought. Yeah, it's right on to 75 ish. This is fucking cool. You can go octave as well. So that'd be That's good for um, setting uh, eight band EQs. Well, the other way you do it is you leave that flat and you bring everything else down. Mm. Okay, so after a wee bit of adjustment, I've got it relatively flat. There's still a wee bit of a dip between 500 and a K, but I think I've actually got it all right now. There's still a dip on the 500 hertz level but I've got the head unit up on the 500 hertz as high as it, at, high as it can possibly go on 500 hertz so um, I think it's pretty good well guys it's been an absolutely hectic last three or four days if you count today it's four but there was only really like a few hours of today um, yeah it's I've been working on this car for pretty much three days straight now and it's just been insane it's been so much fun to do i am so happy with the outcome it sounds bloody awesome especially looks awesome the stereo and the dash the subwoofer in the box those red inserts that i made everything just came out real cleanly and i'm super happy with how it's come out um <laughs> customer has already had a listen to it sounds like he's super stoked with it as well and I just basically wanted to say to you guys, thanks so much for uh, watching my videos and sticking around to see how the job all turned out. Um, when you guys, you know, give me likes and subscriptions and leave comments, ask me questions, all that sort of thing, it really motivates me to make these videos and I appreciate it so much. It, like, yeah, because I, I enjoy making the videos, but I'm not going to do it if no one's going to, you know, pay attention to them. So, yeah, really thank you guys for, you know, doing everything that you guys do and I basically just wanted to say you know make sure you check out oops, make sure you check out my um, Facebook pages because I've got all the photos from this job up there by now they'll probably be up well before the videos are up because I'm still editing the Porsche 911 uh, videos at this stage and then I'm gonna have to edit over well how many I used nearly two 32 gigabyte memory sticks a day and that's three days worth 
so I've got um, if that's like 60 gigs probably around about 150 to 180 gigabytes of footage to have to filter through and sort and edit so I've got yeah lots of filming on the contrary though I am sorry that I didn't get much more filmed of the uh, subwoofer box carpeting and building and things like that because it was uh, we were under the gun to get this job done in time and also particularly last night the guy had turned up and he wanted to take the car away and it wasn't finished so I kind of had to just forego the camera the filming for a wee bit and just you know try and get stuck in and get it finished for him but we managed to tell him convince him to come back uh, this morning so I could finish off what I had to do which was just tune the system secure the sub box and finish off the video for you guys and take some photos so that I could show you all how it looked in the end but um, again as I say I really appreciate all your comments and likes and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like car audio or if you want to see more videos like this coming out in the future um, and again thanks for watching